Hey, what's up everybody? Jeffrey Way here. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be working with CodeIgniter. So I haven't done a CodeIgniter tutorial personally in a, a while, so I thought it was time. And it actually came from a request on Twitter about uh, authentication. So creating like a login system can be pretty simple or very complicated depending upon how many different levels you want. For example, once logged in, you could have different tier structures so that uh, one group of people can access maybe this data, but the group above them can access more. But my guess is if you're watching this, most of the time you really just need one level. You need a system where a user can log in and access some data, and that's really all you need. So we're gonna try to build that as quickly as we can today from scratch. So using Structure, which you can get for free on NetTouch, just search for it. I'm going to create a new CodeIgniter directory and we'll call this Authentication, okay? So what that's going to do is it's going to download the latest files of the CodeIgniter framework and place them within here. So let's go ahead and drag this in to MacVim and we are ready to get started. But first, remember as we are working with PHP, we wanna make sure that we have MAMP running on the Mac. If you're on Windows, you can look for WAMP. So if we wanna check that out, let's go to authentication. And now we have our fresh installation all set to go. All right, so let's get started on this. The very first thing is I'm gonna come down to my controllers. And by the way, I'm going to assume that you have a at least a modest level of knowledge working with CodeIgniter. If you don't, check out the CodeIgniter from scratch series. It's a little dated after CodeIgniter 2 came out, but uh, a lot of it is still applicable. So here is the welcome page. And this is the welcome model that loads the welcome view. So if we wanna look at that view, we can come down to application and it's going to be stored within the views directory and you can see welcome message and there's the file here so let's clean this up really quickly uh, we don't need any of this and how about this so we're going to make this our members only page kick ass members only page okay so at the moment anyone can access this page. So we wanna set up authentication where you have to log in in order to access this section. All right, so let's get started. Now that we have that set up, I'm gonna go back to controllers and we're going to create a new controller and we'll call this admin.php. And I'm going to bring in uh, just a little bit of snippet. I encourage you to save something like this to your snippets program and it's whenever you create a new CI controller it makes sure that people aren't accessing the controller directly and uh, it just runs a quick index function. So we're going to change this to admin and if we were to keep it like this everything's going to be the same. For example if I were to go to admin I'm going to see the exact same page because we're loading it here. But if you want to check just to make sure it works there you go. All right, so what we wanna do here first is set up our login page. So we'll do that right now. This load view, and we're gonna call it login view. Okay, next we're gonna come back and we're gonna come down to our views directory, and I'm gonna add that file right now. So let's go ahead and paste in some beginning markup. I'm not gonna be using templates here. We're doing this very quickly, but of course you might wanna use a header and footer template and stuff like that. So this will be the section where the user logs in, puts their email address, their password, and tries to log in. So we'll do that right here, login. And I'm gonna wanna take advantage of CodeIgniter's form helper functions, and it allows me to do things like this, echo form open, rather than having to write that out all manually. So we can allow support for this by going into the config section and the auto load section. So I'm gonna scroll down here, and you can see this is where we can auto load libraries. Let's make sure we bring in the database library. And next here are the helpers. So the only difference between a library and a helper is just the fact that helpers are, are not classes, they're just functions. So we're gonna take advantage of the URL helper and the form helper. Okay, let's go back into login view. And now we can use this form open. And with the parameter, we're going to specify, relatively speaking, where it's going to post. So when they click the submit button, where are we going to direct? And in this case, we want it to post to itself. So I'm just gonna write admin, and that means post to the admin controller, in which case that index function will run automatically. Okay, and now we're going to echo form close. Okay, within here, we need to create, and just for convenience sake, I'm gonna wrap these within paragraph tags. We need to echo a form label, and this is going to accept a couple parameters. The first one is what is the name of the label. And the second one will be what input does it reference? And we'll say email address. And then after that, we wanna echo the form input. 
Now this one's going to accept a couple parameters. What is the name of the input? Email address. What is the value of it? It's going to be blank for now, though we'll change that shortly. And then the third parameter is any other attributes that you want to pass in. And in this case, a label refers to an ID of an input, not the name. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in as well. So let's come back and if I refresh the page now we can have that and maybe we should put a colon so I'll do that right now. Okay so we have that one set up. Let's yank that and do one more and this time we need to do the password. So we'll pass that in, update these values and then the only, only other thing is of course because this is a password field we don't want to make it regular text we want to make sure they use stars instead. So now if I refresh, can you see I can insert anything I want? And by the way, these are pre-populated just because of my uh, password program. It will not be like that for you. And then the only other thing I want to do while I'm here is very, we're not going to be styling much at all. Minimal label display block. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. Feel free to style that on your own. The last thing, of course, I said that's all we're going to do, and then I did one more, is... Uh, <laughs> echo form submit and the form submit is going to be the name of it and what it says login okay so you fill out the input you fill out the password you click the submit button and that post data will be posted to the admin controller there we go all right so now let's go back to our admin controller and this data is going to be posted here so the next step is we need to determine has the information been posted and we're going to use a form validation to kind of allow for this so with that in mind let's go ahead and load that library load library and this will allow us to ensure that the person does type in an email address and does enter a password so now let's set some rules and we can do that by doing this form validation set rules and the first one is going to be on the input with the name of email address and the second parameter is the pretty form of this. And this is for echoing out an error message. So rather than the email underscore address field is required, it would say the email address. It's just the pretty form that's displayed. And then the third parameter is going to be all of the rules that you want to apply. And you separate each one with a pipe. So in this case, it's required. And also, it needs to be an email address. So we'll say valid email. Isn't that awesome with PHP. I love it. Okay, and the next one we're going to do one more. So we'll just yank that. And this next one is going to be for the password field. And all I want to do here is set it to required. And you know what, let's also do a min length. And we'll say that's four. So they have to insert something and it needs to be at least four characters long. So yeah, if you saw it, it's probably redundant. We can do that and that implies that it's required as well. So we'll get rid of that right there. Okay, so we've set our validation. Now we need to run it. So we can say if this form validation run, we're gonna call the run method on it. And we're gonna say if it does not return false, if that turns out to be the case, then validation passed from the DB, which we'll get to shortly. So let's go over this. Calling the form validation class, we call the run method. It's going to apply these rules, and if it does not fail, so if it's not false, then they entered everything correctly, and we can verify their login credentials against the database. But what if it does fail? What if they do enter their email address incorrectly or they leave it blank? We need a way to display that to them. So let's go back to our login view and we'll scroll down here and we're gonna have a place maybe right here after the form closes and we'll display the errors. So we'll wrap that within a div with a class of errors and we will do PHP echo validation errors. And that's available to us because we loaded that class. And then if you wanna add this as well, we're gonna put this all on one line, color equals red. Okay, so let's try this out now. I'm going to leave both of them blank. Login, and now the email address field must contain a valid email. So now we'll try it, admin at admin.com, and we'll leave password blank. And you know what? Maybe that does get through. Maybe I taught you wrong. Let's try this. Required. I might have just learned something. So click it, leave password blank. Yep, sorry about that. Bad advice. So make sure that if you do min length, you also do required. I assumed it would be implied, but it's not. However, we can do 
three characters, and we know that the minimum length is four. Okay, so cool. With CodeIgniter, we've set up a login form with validation in no time at all. With speaking, it's been a few minutes. But let's try to do this correctly at admin.com, and we'll pass in a gibberish password. And right now, it's posting back to itself because we haven't done anything. But we know that it was successful. So now we can go to the next step, and that means getting the information from the database. But before we can do that, we need to create a database and a table to house all of our users. So you can use PHP MyAdmin or another tool. I'm going to be using a tool for the Mac called Querious. But if you're on Windows, it doesn't matter. Just use PHP MyAdmin. So let's go ahead and log in. And on the Mac, I'm going to have to set my port to 8889. Okay, and so we will create a new database, and we'll call this just demo. Create a new table, and the table name is going to be users. So here we need to have an ID, but I want to make sure this ID is a primary key and that it'll auto-increment, meaning we don't have to specify the ID. It'll increment by one every single time. The next one we need is their first name. And we'll set a length of 40 to be generous. And then we'll do a last name. We also need their email address, their password. Now, that's going to be stored. We're going to be using the SHA-1, if you've ever heard that. It's an encryption, a pretty powerful encryption. So we'll keep it like that when we enter into the database. And then I always like to do a date created as well. And that lets me know uh, when that account was created. So now we need to do the nulls. Can first name be no? Null? No. No. Email address, definitely not. Password, no. And the date created, no, because we're auto setting that. And that'll be set to current timestamp. And we're gonna set the type of this date equal to timestamp. Note that you cannot use date time and auto set it to the best of my knowledge. All right, so we have an ID, a first name, last name, email address, password, and date created. So we're not going to create a registration page. It'll just take too long. But if you want to do that on your own, you would simply have a view that has each of these inputs. And then when they click submit, you enter that information into the database. But for now, we'll save that and run this query. We will just manually create an account. So we'll do me, Jeffrey, Way. And then the password, we need to uh, encrypt the password. So we'll do that right up here. And we'll say echo SHA-1 my password. And we'll die. Refresh. And there is our encrypted password. So that is what will be stored in the database. All right, so we have created our account. So now, when the user logs in, we need to compare the credentials that the user logged in with against what's in the database. So get rid of that and we need to create a new model so we'll go into application and we can do that within the models directory and we'll call this admin model.php as with before i've saved an opening model snippet and we're going to change this to admin model and it extends the CI model class. OK, so this is responsible for interacting with the database to be as generalized as possible. So we'll do public function, and we're going to create a function called verify user. And this method will be responsible for querying the, the database and determining if a row was found. So we need to accept the email address as well as the password that the user enters. So we'll do that right now. Create a new variable called Q, and that's going to be equal to this DB. Now, remember, we have access to the database class because we auto-loaded it. We'll say this DB where the email address field is equal to whatever is passed in, and also where password field is equal to password. But not just password. Remember, we need to run the SHA-1 method on it. So if they enter my password, it's stored in the database as a long 30 string of characters. So we need to make sure we encrypt that and compare the encrypted version against what's in the database. Uh, just to be safe, we're going to say limit one. Make sure only one row is returned. And we're going to get from what table? We called the table users. OK, so hopefully this makes sense. Notice that these fields correspond to here, email address, password. So select from the database from the users table where the email address is equal to what the user types into that email address text box and where the password is equal to the encrypted form of what they type into the password box and we're going to get that now we need to say was anything returned and we can determine that by using if 
Q num rows that'll be available to us. And if something's returned, it would be equal to one, or we can say if it's greater than zero, then we know something was returned. Otherwise, nope, nothing was returned or there was an error. So at this point, we're going to return Q and you'll often use result, and that's if you're selecting maybe a lot from a database, a lot of rows. But in this case, we're only returning exactly one row. So we can specify just return that single row, and that will now be an object containing the values from each of these fields. And if you wanna check that out, why don't we do this? Echo pre, print r, q, row, and echo a closing pre tag. And let's just check that out. First, let's go back to my admin model, and we need to make sure that we load model, that admin model that we created, and then we'll call this admin model verify user. And for now, we'll hard code those values in. So jeffwayyahoo.com, and the password I believe we gave it was my password. So let's see what is returned when we do this now. We'll enter our credentials, my password. Okay, good. So now we can see that there was a database error and we have select star from users where email equals the email and the password equals that limit one. And it says no database selected. So we need to set a default database. That's the problem. And we can do that from within the database class. So I'm going to load that right now. By the way, I'm loading this quickly, but if you need it, it's in the config folder within database.php. So let's set our credentials now. We have our host name. We need to put in the username. In this case, I'm on my local host, so both of them are root. And the database name was demo. All right, let's try that one more time. Refresh. And it looks like I have some weird font installed. I'll have to fix that. But you can see here what is returned is an object containing the values. Very cool. So now, with that in mind, let's go back to admin model. Get rid of that. And now we're going to return the information on that row. Otherwise, we're gonna return false. So while we could do else return false, it's really not necessary because if something was returned from the database, we will return here. So if it even gets to this point, it's sort of implied that it's else. So we'll just save a few characters and not do that. All right, so that is it for our model. Let's save that and return to our admin controller. So now we have called this method. Let's go ahead and bring that down and we're gonna verify the user, but this time we wanna make sure that we pass in actually what they type rather than hard coding it in. So we'll do this input, and this is a CodeIgniter class that is auto-loaded, so you don't have to manually load it like this. So we can this, this input post email address, and the next one we're gonna do is this input post password. So what is this input post? It's the same thing with regular PHP as doing this. Okay, it's just a class that makes it a little simpler, gives you a little more security. Now, notice how we're not filtering this at all, shouldn't we? Well, we can let CodeIgniter do that for us. If I go to application, config, and I scroll down, oh, by the way, we should set a base URL while we're here. So we'll paste that in like so. And now make sure when you deploy that, that you update that. This would be if you want to remove your index file, you can do that easily with an HT access file. And when you do that, you'd get rid of this. But what we want here is, I'm going to search for XXS. And we can see here it determines whether the filter is always active when post or cookie data is encountered. And let's set that to true. And next, we're going to protect against cross-site request forgery. You can learn about that more on NetTouch or by Googling it. And we're going to set that to true. And you can see if you are accepting user data, it is strongly recommended that this be enabled. So we've done that. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about doing all of that filtering manually. So we're calling in our model, the verify user, we're passing in the email address and we're passing in our password. Next, this is represented here and here. And we run a query and we say, get from the database where the email address is what they typed in, where the password is what they typed in, encrypted, and try to get something back. And if you did, that means, yes, they have an account. Go ahead and return that data. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Let's return back to our controller. So in order to capture the result from that model, we need to make sure that we store it 
in a variable. And while we're here, why don't we clean this up just a little bit, like so, just a little easier to read. So now we can say, if nothing was found in the database, remember we returned false. So we can say, if res, as long as it does not equal false, then person has an account. And if that's the case, we're going to create a new session variable, and we'll call this username. It's actually their email address, but you know how you sign up for an account and your username is your email address. That's the thinking. Input post email address. So if they do have something in the database, we're going to set a session variable called username and make it equal to their email address. Now remember, before we can use this super global, we need to run session start, right? And a good place to do that will be in the constructor function. We well, could do public, but it's implied that it's a magic method, so you don't really need to either way. So we'll run session start. Now, this isn't going to work. Um, we can test this out if we want, and you'll see, and good, this is what I'm referring to, call to a member function library on a non-object on line 11. So right here, what, why, why can't we access this? What's wrong with this? And it's because we have this constructor method. If I remove that, it seems to work again. So what happened? Remember, we are extending the CI controller so that we get access to all of those methods. So when you create your own constructor function, that overrides the CI controller's constructor method. So we need to make sure that we bring in anything that's contained within that class. And you can do that by referencing the parent a uh, parent is a way to reference what you're extending. And then we're going to call its constructor method. OK, so we're going to call that method. And then when that's done, we're going to run our own stuff. And that way, we don't override anything. Refresh, there we go. So we've entered our username. We've entered our password. We've logged in. It's been determined that an account is in the database. So we create a session variable, and we make it equal to what they type in. Now, they're done logging in, so let's redirect them to that uh, members-only welcome controller. But what if they don't enter everything correctly? What if there is no account and they're trying to log in illegally? Okay, well, in that case, this will return false, in which case we're not going to do anything because it'll just keep going to the bottom, and this will run. We'll, we'll just reload the login view. So let's try this out now. So admin, I'm going to create a gibberish credentials. Let lets me know. Let's get rid of the password. OK, so we have all of our validation. Let's enter something that is not an account, login. And you see it just sent us right back. So the last thing I want to do here is note if we enter this incorrectly and we click login, notice it all defaults back. And I'm sorry this is auto-populating, but that'll just be blank when it reloads on your computer. And it gets rid of everything I typed in, and that's just a major pain. So it would be nice if we can make CodeIgniter remember what we typed in. And we can definitely do that. So we'll return to our view. And right here, this second parameter is the value. So if we were to do high, if you wanted to test this out, see there. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use something available to us from the validation class, the form validation class. And we're going to say set value. And then we pass in the name, email address. OK, so if one exists, it'll just go ahead and populate the value field. So let's try this out this time. Jeffrey Way, password. We don't want to auto populate that. So log in and notice it remembers that. OK, so we are all set. Let's go back to admin. If everything was done correctly and we logged in, we should be redirected to the welcome screen. And our password was my password. It's going to encrypt that and compare it to what's in the, the database. And sure enough, kick ass members only page. Next thing, though, is what about when they log out? So we need to come back here and we have our index method. Why don't we next create another function? And this will be called log out. And all this should do is destroy the session. So we can say session destroy, or you can also use unset with session to get rid of the username. And technically, that's probably the smarter choice, but it's fine for our demo here. And then we've removed the session parameter here. Next, that's this load view. When you log out, it's customary to bring you back to the login view page. So say login view. OK, so now the next problem is, regardless of whether we're logged in or not, I can always access this welcome controller. And by the way, if we leave it like this, notice that by default, it's on that welcome controller. So why don't we go back to config 
and the routes file. If we come down here, we can set the default controller. And right now it's automatically set to welcome. Why don't we set the default controller to the admin? That way it automatically brings us to the admin form. But again, if we want to go to welcome, it's always available to us. So as long as they know that URL, it doesn't matter if they're logged in or not because they can access it. So from within that controller, we need to perform a test to see if that session variable is set. So we can do that right down here and we'll create a new constructor method. And this time we're going to be working with session. So let's make sure we start that. And remember, we need to make sure that we call the parents constructor method. And now we'll say if not is set session username. So when you load this page, if there is not a session property called username, then we know that they have not logged in, in which case they shouldn't be here. So we will redirect them to back to the admin controller, which will load the login page. All right, let's try that now. Refresh, index, try to go to welcome, and that's accessed, but that's only because we're logged in. Let's log out and now try to access it. See? We're trying to load that welcome controller and we can even specify the index method and we're not logged in so it won't allow us to access that page. So now let's log in and now it's running this test and says, no, wait, no, there is a session property named username. So this never runs and it goes ahead and displays the contents here. So what if you have multiple controllers? It's kind of a shame to do this for every controller. So if you have one or two controllers, that's fine. You can probably hard code this in. But otherwise, what you would want to do is create a new library. And that library, again, would extend the controller. And then you would paste this code in and auto load the library with your project. That way, this code always runs when a controller loads. So that's up to you how you want to do that. Okay, so we've created our, our login functionality. The only things we haven't done is a registration page, which I'm sure you can do on your own. Look into using uh, active records. So you could do this DB insert into the user database with the contents of the form fields. And the only other two things I want to do here is make up some prettier routes and let's get, a, get rid of this index.php file. So let's do the first one right now. We'll create an HT access file. And I have a little bit saved, I believe. Yeah. So this is just a rewrite rule that will direct everything. It gets rid of the index.html file. So now what we can do is get rid of that and it still loads just fine. So that part is done. And the next one is pretty URLs. So remember by default, it's going to direct us here, but that's another problem. We can go to the welcome because we're logged in. So we should never even really be able to access this login screen, right? So let's do that as well. Come back to admin.php. And we'll do that right here. So this is the method that displays, potentially displays the login form. So we'll do if, again, if is set session username, then they've already logged in and they don't need to be seeing this page. And in that case, let's redirect them to the default page. In this case, that's going to be the welcome controller. So now they're logged in. I've refreshed, no matter what, even when I try to go to the admin class, it just automatically directs me to the, the proper page. Notice how index.php is still showing up, and that's because we need to get rid of that section within the config file. So we can go to config slash config.php and come down and make sure we remove that. So let's try it again. There you go. So now I want it to be easy for them to log out maybe by doing something like log out, and that will automatically route to admin slash log out. Okay, so we can do that within the routes file. And we'll just come down right here and create another one, route. And this parameter is going to be what the user types in. So if they type in log out, then we want to, and by the way, that's going to be relative, then we want to send them to admin log out. All right, let's try that. So before log out doesn't work, after now it logs us out so that it just creates pretty URLs. And so, yeah, that's going to do it. So fairly quickly, we created a, a very, a very simple login system, but I would imagine for, for most of your needs, this will be just fine. If you're building a much more massive site like Amazon, of course, you would want something way more in depth, but for simple sites where you just need to be able to give your client the ability to log in, maybe access some configuration options or, 
or administrative duties, this is going to work just fine. So if you have any questions at all, let me know. If you have improvements, definitely let me know. And you can access all of this on GitHub, which I will link to. All right, guys, I will see you later. My name is Jeffrey Way. And if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor and subscribe or follow us. Uh, the bigger our numbers, the more money we can spend on bringing you guys more kick-ass tutorials. So I'll see you later. Bye.